Warning, warning, this person is reversing. Walking backwards, retracing my steps, walking backwards, back to before you to live. I'm going back past where it went wrong, back to the Time to throw open the phone lines. As we go straight to line seven this morning. Who's on line seven? Hello, it's uh, Stuart Cattell. Morning, morning, Stuart. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Stuart, what have you got for us this morning? Uh, well, I've just finished a, a walking challenge, 100 miles. I walked from Braunston Marina down the Grand Union Canal to finish up at Macmillan Cancer Support Head Office. Uh, but I, I didn't do it normally. I walked backwards. <laughs> difficult. So, Stuart, first of all, how long did it take you to do that, to do the 100 miles? 10 days. 10, 10 days. days. 10 miles a day. Did you bump into anything? Yeah, lots of things. Nearly fell in the canal twice. No. I was about to say, that walking alongside a canal backwards sounds a terrible risk to me. When you were practising, are you allowed to turn your head and look backwards, or do you just yes, have I to... Yes, I do. I, okay. I did design some side mirrors, but they didn't work very well. They're very <laughs> shaky. You can't see the image, so, so I just keep looking backwards. The trick is to keep looking at opposite sides of your neck so otherwise you end up with a very, so very it. painful neck. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Stuart when you encountered other walkers on your trip what, what did what did they make any comment? Uh, fantastic well it was great response we actually raised uh, £5,560 um, and just for walking on the canal that, that was incredible really I was overwhelmed That is amazing Stuart and what about the calves how are they coping this morning because I imagine they're yeah, slightly they're tight they okay yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're using a lot of muscles that you don't normally use. Yeah. I know the first time I did my training, I couldn't even have to walk up the stairs to get to bed. I had to go up on my backside. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart, it's quite a feat, and congratulations on raising so much money as well. Have you got any plans? What's your next challenge? Do you have any plans for the future, or is that are you done now on the old backwards uh, walking? No, I, I think um, I, may, I enjoyed walking backwards so much, I might even attempt the London Marathon next year backwards. Wow. No. Okay, well, look, we'll keep an eye open for you. And uh, we wish you the very best of luck. Thanks for being our first caller of the day. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Bye, Stuart. Cheers, bye. But first, he has pushed a Brussels sprout up Mount Snowdon with his nose. He cycled the length of the country in a pedal-powered bathtub. Why wouldn't you? And now he's walking 100 miles backwards. When it comes to fundraising, Stuart Kettle is a bit of a fanatic. Tomorrow... He'll set off for London from Braunston Marina in Northamptonshire, where Chris Holland has been to meet him. My name's Stuart Cattell. I'm a Macmillan Cancer Support fundraiser. Over the next 10 days, we're on our way from Braunston Marina to Macmillan's HQ, which is up in London. The route that I'm doing is going to be 100 miles, walking backwards. Um, I've had the shoes made the wrong way round, which are pretty uncomfortable, so I've got to keep making sure I lift my feet up so I don't trip and fall back into the canal. The biggest problem with walking backwards is your body's just not used to doing it. It's okay for a short distance, but when you're doing the sort of miles that we're going to be doing, um, my, my, during training my hips have been painful, my knees are painful. I couldn't even walk up the stairs after doing a three mile run and um, we've got to do over 10 miles every day. Also being followed by Norman, who's 85. He also has a big challenge, like myself. He's got 102 locks, so he's following me in his 60-foot narrowboat, and he's got a major challenge too. I've done lots of challenges for Matt Millen, and nothing I do is normal. Crazy stuff, uh, like I pushed a Brussels sprout up Mount Snowdon with my nose. I've used to film patient case studies for Macmillan Cancer Support, so I've seen their work firsthand, what they did, and I was just so inspired by the work that they do, the great work that they do, helping people live with cancer, and um, it just inspired me to do fundraising, so I started doing the fundraising about 14 years ago, and long may it continue. Oh, Stuart, you are an absolute inspiration. Best of luck, my friend. Looking back.
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bleaky 85 miles to go, yeah. Oh, come on, get a move on. 20 miles and he's still going strong. Yeah, good welcome from the pub. Navigation. Fond memories of 1996, our horse about trip where we stopped off here overnight. So, here I am again. Minus horse. And it's the addition of young Stuart, the badman who does all these amazing fundraising events, if you like to put it that way, for Macmillan Cancer Support. Hopefully it won't be a case of every lock, but if you've got about 20 odd locks or more to go through today at 20 minutes a lock, um, well that's, I don't know, about five hours gone just working locks. Well, this is Limehouse now. Big change from the first day we came here, Gilly and I. It's the old ship lock. It's now replaced by the radio gated lock. Well, we're waiting to cross over to uh, St. Cat's Dock. And uh, this is the weather. And the narrowboat's just getting thrown around everywhere. And we're just waiting for the tide, and then we're going to set off in this. I can't believe it. Well, as you see, we are secured to a mooring buoy. Stuart did a great job of that. And where are, where are we? Right, we're outside St. Catherine's Dock. And there's, there's the dock gate, which we're waiting to disappear, so as we can come in. And here's the power bridge. As you, as you can see, Stuart's enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> well, hello there, Stuart. This is David Jason here. Now, I understand that you are a huge fan of Only Fools and Horses, right? So, I just thought I would say hello and well done on all your fundraising achievements for Macmillan. So, to keep in line with your skill at walking backwards to help raise money for this fantastic charity. I have only one thing to say to you, and that is jubbly lovely. years now I do a challenge every year and um, the wackiest one was pushing a Brussels sprout up Mount Snowdon with my nose um, so I came up with this challenge this year of walking uh, 100 miles and then to put the extra slant on it I uh, decided to do it backwards um, it's been a fantastic challenge I've enjoyed every moment of it uh, meeting Norman was also a massive privilege uh, couldn't have done it without him he's such um, an integral part of the challenge um, supplying me my accommodation and looking after me making sure I didn't fall backwards into the canal or bump into anybody. Um, it's been a privilege um, and everybody's just been absolutely fantastic and um, to raise over £5,000 um, is just fantastic, so couldn't be happy. Uh, it's been a privilege to do this. I am the support person for this venture, which uh, basically was using my canal boat brewing uh, to accompany Stuart on the 137 mile walk of which he walked 100 miles backwards as promised and it was an amazing adventure. It was full of difficulties and I think uh, we both stretched ourselves beyond our normal limits. So once again it is my unbelievable privilege to be with Stuart who has completed yet another crazy, zany and absolutely madcap challenge for us. This time walking backwards, who knew that that was even possible? Huge thank you to Stuart for doing the incredible and crazy things he does for us because actually it's through that really that we get all the press coverage and all of the attention and people raising money on route to work when he's doing his challenges which just means that we can actually continue to do the amazing work that we do for people living with cancer. 
This is my first supporter event since the start of the pandemic in 18 months, so I could cry because it is just such a brilliant and humbling moment to be part of this. And honestly, Stuart, you are a legend, as you know, and we're so grateful to you because over the years, the things that you have done have just enabled us to be there for the people who have really needed us. And at no time in, ever in our history has that been as important as it is today. And it's exactly because of supporters like Stuart and Norman that we're able to fund up for Area Vital Services.